Okay, let's try this out. I'm going to try actually doing one of these things. I will probably delete it later because there's a budgie sitting in the background. Okay, so we're going to try doing a TFL derivation problem. To get one, I'm going to go to the file on Canvas with additional TFL derivation problems, and we're going to do problem number one. So remember, in this file, they use slightly different um, symbols from what we use in our textbook. So this horseshoe sign here, that is the arrow. So this is an if then. There's your or, that looks familiar. This tilde sign, the squiggle, that's a not sign. You're used to using a sort of hook. Okay, and that's all the symbols we've got in this problem number one. So first thing we're going to do is I'm going to copy this problem into the Open Logic Project website. So let's switch over to that window. Okay, there we are. So I need to type in the conclusion we want to get, which you'll remember was not u. Uh, here we are. Okay, so I'm going to type in not u. Remember, it needs to be capital letters for your atomic sentences. And I'll put in premises, either separated with commas or semicolons. We have two premises. One was if u, then v or w. Second premise, not open bracket v or w. So I click create problem, and there we go. So the website is already set up for us. The premises, we'll need to type in the conclusion we're trying to get on a new line. So hit new line, type in not you. And now I'm going to add a bunch of space to work in, just so I remind myself where I need to finish. Right. I need to get from these premises to this conclusion. Okay. You remember what I've told you about plan A, plan B, what our first instinct is. Whenever we have a new derivation problem like this, we start by looking at the conclusion and checking its main connective. In this case, the main connective is not. So I know immediately I'm going to start by working backwards using not introduction. So now I go look up, either in your textbook or in this list on the side, where is not introduction? And that's going to tell me what I need to do. There it is, not introduction. So this says if I'm trying to get not A by this rule, not introduction, then I need what's up above it. What's up above it here is a subproof. That is a temporary assumption, so I temporarily assume a, if I'm trying to get not A, and I need that subproof to end with a contradiction sign. So let's come back here. I'm not trying to get not A, I'm trying to get not U. Right, so that means wherever this A shows up in the statement of the rule, I need to replace that with U. So I'm going to open a subproof. The way you do that is you hover over the line above where you want the subproof to start and click not the new line button, the new subproof. Bam. Okay, so I want my subproof to start with U, and I want it to end. I'm going to click this button when I hover over the beginning of the subproof to make a new line inside the same subproof. Here we go. And now I need to get a contradiction symbol. How do I type a contradiction? I don't have that symbol on my keyboard, but I can go down here and look for. There we go. For a contradiction, you can type any of these things. You can copy, you can select this, copy and paste it. You can use a hash sign. I usually remember two capital X's. That's how I write a contradiction sign. And the website knows, oops, website knows to turn that into contradiction sign. Okay, I'm going to delete all this empty space because I've said this final thing, I'm going to get my not introduction. That means as long as I can fill out this subproof, I'll be done. I don't need this extra space. So I'm going to come over here and just delete those extra lines. I'm going to put a bunch of extra lines in here because I need to get somehow from this to this. Okay, my conclusion now is different from what it was before. My current goal is a contradiction sign. So I start the procedure over plan A, check the main connective, 
of the thing you're trying to get. That's a contradiction sign. I could, depending on your version of the textbook, you might have a rule that's called contradiction introduction, or you might not. If you have contradiction introduction, it's this rule. If you don't, it's called not elimination. Either way, it's a little bit fun, right? The thing about contradiction introduction or negation elimination is unlike other introduction rules, it doesn't tell you what you have to get. So this says, if I want to get contradiction sign, I need A and not A on previous lines. But you could fill anything in that gap, right? Just looking at the contradiction sign doesn't tell me what I need to fill in in the A gap. That's different from, for example, negation introduction, right? If I know what I'm trying to get, then I know what I'm filling in up here. I know what I need, right? In order to get not A, I need to assume A and derive a contradiction from it. But this contradiction sign doesn't tell me what two things I need to get, just something and the negation of that something. So in short, I'm saying, let's go to plan B. Plan B, you'll remember, is look at the lines you have available. In this case, lines one, two, and three, those are all fair game while we're working down here. And see which elimination rules you can use. Okay, just like with plan A, when we wanted to see which introduction rule we're using, we check the main connective. We're deciding which elimination rule to use, you check the main connectives of those available lines. Line three is atomic, so there's no elimination rule to use on it. Line two, main connective is negation. That's that funny rule we were just talking about. Let's put that to one side for a second. Line one, there's two connectives here, but arrow is the main connective. That means the only elimination rule we could use on this is arrow elimination. So let's go look up arrow elimination. There it is. Arrow elimination says if you have an arrow sentence, A, arrow, B. So in this case, A is U, B is V or W. Right? That's what's filling in the A blank and the B blank in this scheme. So the rule says if you have A, arrow, B, and you also have A, then you can get B by arrow elimination. So I need two things, not just the arrow sentence. I need to also have U somewhere. Luckily, I do, right here on line three. So I can apply arrow elimination here. That will get me V or W. And say I'm doing that by arrow elimination on lines one and three. Okay, now I have V or W. Remember this other thing we haven't eliminated? Remember we wanted to get a contradiction? I have a sentence, V or W, and the negation of that sentence. Those are the two ingredients I needed for contradiction introduction or negation elimination, depending on what you call this rule. If you have something and the negation of that same something, then you have a contradiction. So I can say I get this by negation elimination on line two and four. I can delete these extra lines. And now we're done, except that I need to type in line numbers for this rule. So that negation introduction rule, remember, says cite a subproof. Cite the range of numbers, separated with a hyphen, not a comma, from whatever line it starts on to whatever line it ends on. In this case, my subproof was from three to five. So this is three to five. And now I'm done. So I'll click check proof. Congratulations. Just to show you that this still works, let's use the other name of this rule. Instead of negation elimination, let's call this contradiction introduction. Check proof again. That's still fine. So there we go. We're all done.